One thing that I find particularly like distasteful is just seeing so many people try to use, like you end up in conversations with different people online and whatnot, but so many people have kind of tried to use that to insult you or de degrade your character. What is it like dealing with that, especially since from my perspective, I look at you as kind of like a hero for being willing to put all that shit out there and to endure the bad press that you get as a result. Well, it used to be hurting, but then I realized people were dealing with envious. I mean, there's a lot of envious people. I mean, I, I say it all the time. A lot of these dudes wanted the fame. Mm. I never wanted this fame. All of this was an accident. You have dudes out there, the people that's envious of me, this is something that they've been fighting for their whole life. Me, this 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 was an accident for me. Mm. But it was also me being myself, who I am. Right. I don't bite my tongue, I speak my mind. If I feel something about a topic, I mean, it is what it is. I can't live in the prison of what somebody think about me. Right, definitely. So I understand that you and WAC have had conversations in recent memory, so you guys have gotten back to a, a better place in terms of your relationship. Well, we be we me and Wack um we we've been cordial. We we spoken on the phone. I just like need a little bit more understand. We need this me and me and Wack need to speak a little bit more because there's a lot of things I still don't understand about you know where we fell apart at, how mm. we fell apart. Right. Cuz he he had a particular moment when you guys were on the Academics podcast where he said some relatively rude shit to you in regards to all that, in regards to your past with the Bambata situation and everything like that. And uh, as much as that's a friend of mine, I, I was a little shocked by his willingness to like kind of use that to try to get the upper hand of an argument. Well, I mean, I didn't see, I didn't take what Wack did or what he was saying personal because me and Wack spoke before we actually got on air and he wasn't disrespectful. The things that he said after the podcast, when we was away from each other, was more disrespectful than what he said when we was face to face. Mm. When we was together, it was all fun. It was, it was laughs and jokes and behind the scenes. It was I had I actually had a good time. Mm. I, I felt I actually during that time when we was together, that it felt it was a good feeling there. Did you feel like that was fake? Like he was playing a character for social media to to get a reaction? Nah, when we was together, honestly speaking. I thought that the chemistry between all of us was dope. I thought the interview was dope. I thought his personality was dope, but it just went left the next day. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But because, okay, you're referring to the phone call that you guys had where you were, oh, no, no, so you're referring to like shit Clubhouse. that he said on Clubhouse after the, the Clubhouse, fact about yeah. the Bambada shit and all that. What, what was it in particular that he said that rubbed you the wrong way on, on the phone call? Something about, um, me sucking Bam's dick, I said, like, he got disrespectful. He got crazy disrespectful. Mm. And see, my whole thing is is that I, there's a line that I don't cross, that I that I don't, I don't play with people. I don't give a fuck who you is. Mm. And to hear him say some of the things that he said, it was like, wow. You know what I mean? He got, like, real, real crazy mm. for Clubhouse. Right. You know what I mean? And I didn't understand that because I, I, I was planning on flying out to L.A. and everything dealing with whack. Right. And uh, so then after that, you guys end up getting on the phone and that's when he ends up kind of divulging the, the, the secret Nipsey tape information to you? No, before that. So that was before the interview and the clubhouse shit or? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was before that. So he had already told you about that, and then you got, and, and you had ended up recording it. What 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 made you want to record that in the first place? Because when Wack was like a lot of things that he said that he he spoke about, like me, like for example, I'll give you an example. When he broke down how he set up De La Hoya, uh huh, and he he, he extorted him out of eight hundred thousand dollars. You see what I'm saying? Right. And he was behind the pictures all over the internet of De La Hoya with the fishnet outfit on, looking real fruity, <laughs> and you know what I mean? I started to realize, like, listening to him and, and him talking about the tapes that he had on Nipsey and Nipsey being gay, and I'm like, yo, this nigga got a lot of tapes. Mm. That's not normal. Having tapes on people is not normal. <laughs> right, it's a strange pastime. I don't have tapes on nobody. Right. The only tape I ever had, I, had, I, I recorded two people. I, I, I recorded what? And I recorded a conversation, one conversation that I had with Maino, just so he couldn't tell niggas he was just talking to me any old kind of way because I try to make niggas understand I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm not scared of nobody. Mm. So where's things at with, with Maino at this point? Was that, I might have missed that one. I mean, 
I don't, like, listen, I want people to understand something. Don't take it personal, but take it personal if you choose to. When it comes to hip hop, when I see certain things that's that's happening, um, or certain characteristics of some of these rappers, that's senior citizen rappers, that's what I call them. Mm. You're a senior citizen. These niggas raise their children in the best of ways, but they send a message that send our kids to the penitentiary. I'm not with it. Right. Yeah, no, there's a huge amount of dissonance. I see that all the time in terms of like how dudes who have connections to the street or whatever will treat, you know, the young dudes from their block versus the way that they want to raise their kids. And sometimes it's kind of shocking to me that people are able to sort of live both of these realities at the same time. And if anything, like having kids, it's really it pushes me in the direction constantly of having to kind of second guess everything I'm doing and wonder, like, is this, you know, do, is this the world that I want my kid to enter into? Right. And, you know, children in the hood don't know the difference. When you make it out of the hood, it's, it's, it's sort of like going to North Carolina, South Carolina, you in the suburbs. And you're like, wow, I see nice gardens, I see nice trees. And then you get back to the hood, you duck in shootouts. So the kids in the hood, they think this shit is normal. Mm. But when you have these celebrities like a Mano, like a Jim Jones and... It's not that I hate these brothers. It's that I want them to understand the power of the influence. Mm. 